and we're at the Nodding Donkeys of Kimmeridge. Yeah, the Texas oil fields have got nothing on the uh, Kimmeridge oil field. It's quite small, but you can smell it a mile off. Um, yes, and it's 9.30 and I've made it. Actually, no, it's not 9.30. My phone, for some reason, is suddenly switched because I, I'm i out of contact of, of the world. I suddenly switched to... I don't know. I don't know what time. It's, it was saying it was 9.30. It's 8.30. Because it's only just gone dark, unless some kind of magic is happening here that somehow it gets light until now later. So here's yeah, eight thirty and I'm at Kimmeridge. Uh well the oil fieldy bit. Uh and probably at a refinery, I don't know if I can smell that. It's interesting because the UAS UASC company, I've seen them launch a little um they're allowed to launch from Arishmel their little dinghies because they turned up and I looked up who they were and it was like contractors and I was like going but they're not that they're not rangy people and I think it was something to do with the oil field uh, that was something I was there a couple of years ago and yeah I'm pretty sure you could actually get to that beach it's now all locked off but they have like a container on there and it's uh, I'm pretty sure it's to do with the oil people so yes mod is somehow renting stuff out so um, it's getting rather dark worryingly I'm just walking to Cumberidge Bay itself now I think Cumberidge Village is a while I can, you can see the, that weird folly thing which I saw in the distance from Knoll Hill is lit up at the moment but it's some kind of folly I, can't, I should remember the name of it because I've looked on the map several times. It's just after Cambridge, but I've got out of the range, so um, the oil field is just outside the range. So it's all the death march to, or really dusk march to be more right, but it was more like, you know, Cambridge or bust. And I'm here. Uh, I might have to get a taxi home. Uh, or we can see. I mean, it's the. It's only about two, about two-ish miles to home. Um, the only thing that bothers me is just lack of having my head torch. But I just wanted to do it anyway. And I really enjoyed doing the dusk walk because all day it's been, you know, people competing back and forth. And they weren't there. Ooh, those people who were running around, they'd long gone. <laughs> So there was a lot of weirdness and a lot of strange shades as well, and people being all competitive on the on the cliffs. <laughs> it's strange people doing the power walking and the running and and all that sort of thing, and like showing off. Um, <laughs> but you know, I, I walk them all because I keep going for longer. Um, when they they're all in their beddy buys, I'm still going. So. I actually tend to walk more and I haven't totted it up I think it was about five miles it was about five miles must have been to Tynum and then a couple of miles to Irish Mail back again to Tynum and then one but only two miles from Tynum to the to Kimmeridge so I'm going to Bay this is, I'm, I think it says Kimmeridge. I think it meant Kimmeridge itself. It felt like it was longer than one and a half. One and three quarters. But anyway, we're at... I assume this is the bay bit. I don't know. I don't know what this is. What is this? Oh, it's a car park. Um, it's a car park. It has, what's it for? Parking cars. And there's a bench. Hello, bench been lack of those in the range I have to say I think this this is a car park for the bay and you can probably hear the bay in the distance I'm not going to go too close to the edge I'm not going to go down to the bay either it's been wonderful but now I need to work out how to get home 
I'm already planning my dinner. So anyway, that was a success. That means that's done. That doesn't mean I won't be doing any more. Um, it's not like, oh, Kimmich is done. And also, I've got to do the bit from Kimmich to um, is it Chap Chapman's Pool. So I've got to do that bit anyway. So um, there's a little bit more to do. I'll probably be as stiff as a board because I haven't done one of these really long walks. I, I used to do these kind of walks. I remember walking into Dover and it was almost pitch black um, once. You know, and I didn't have a torch. Um, I might have had, but I don't think I did. Um, so, you know, I, I quite like doing this, but I stopped doing them because I had a few times where I got kind of a bit trapped or ended up having to. I think one time, I think I had to get a room in Bournemouth. Bournemouth! Um, which is not recommended. Um, and one time, a few of the times, I kind of like had to do late night taxis, which I might do, but I think my, my feet are not happy, but walkable. So I'm walking, hopefully, I'm going to check where it's going, the road to the village. And it would be wonderful, but it won't happen, if there was a hostelry with alcohol and cold drinks. And I could sit there and maybe call a taxi. This will not happen because um, uh, well it's Sunday so you'd think with the oil field in quote yeah, you'd think with the Dallas money coming in you think they would have a bit of an interesting naughty tribune or a kind of a late night bar with all, the, with all the oil money I'm not sure but yeah it's a Sunday in Dulcet the likelihood of having a, a late night shop in a small village or a pub open like the Weld Arms I went past the Weld Arms and it closed half an hour ago and it was seven, it was 5.30 <sighs> it was by the Castle Inn in, in Corf I went there and they're, they're in midweek and they closed and it was after it was nine it's like it's a different world out here Anyway, I'll speak to you soon. Second time I recorded this because I was in the um, welcome centre at Corf Castle and the court, I was like, oh, it's lovely and quiet, um, charging up my devices, which is a good tip if you need somewhere to charge things at Corf. Go to the cafe um, and it has like charge points and and plugs and things. I wish I'd known about that before because I've been running on empty with battery stuff recently. And then a coach load came in so there's like massive noises and I was like, oh, I gave up. So yes, last night I did walk back from Kimmeridge uh, it was three three quarter miles, um, mostly on well, on roads. I did I did the echoes of the last jaunt. I had a cornfield path that was like, oh my god, is this like, you know, I know we're near Church Knoll. Well, I keep calling it Cock Knoll, but Church Knoll. Is this like Punk Knoll? I was like, oh my god, children on the corn. So yeah, that that was the. That was that, but it, it it was not a bad walk, um, but there was no pubs or anything at Kimridge. I was surprised, because apparently the oil field is operated remotely. It's mostly automated, so there aren't any oil people on site, so, yeah. It was completely dead, not a shop or anything, nothing in Kimridge. So, nothing I could see that was open. It's apparently a museum. So, I walked... And I managed to find a pub on the way because there's a really nice pub just down the road from the campsite, which I knew of because I'm trying to walk away from the traffic. This is all the traffic. It's on a, a nice day. Apparently it's the last day before kids have got to go back to school. And so there is so many coach loads of people, so many. Oh, there's the, there's the steam railway. Uh, there's so much sort of... 
noises going on. That, you know, so many so much traffic coming in and steam trains. Um, that it's just you know crazy. You are here. It's not there. What's the best way to get into court? Do I have to walk all the way back? I wouldn't walk on the roads today. Um, yeah, you can hear the, uh, that's the steam railway. They were operating on the strike days. So, yes, so I must find a place called New Inn, and it was open. I was like, on a Sunday, open at, at 10 o'clock. So I went and had a drink and had a good chat with some of the locals, only a couple of locals in there. Um, about politics and setting the world to right and that really helped the walk because it, I noticed that my just because of the rest and the wine my it's only one glass of wine but it, it my feet seemed to not mind the rest of that walk <laughs> well lubricated though not as lubricated as the woman back at the campsite because when I arrived back I think it was about 11.30 maybe 12 I was aiming for 10.30 but I stayed at the the pub until about, about 11-ish, so I think I must have got back about 11.30 and there was this Karen this sort of older Karen who was even down to the bob haircut, but more in her 60s and she was freaking out because the barrier was down and every time I've been there, she's like oh, why is the barrier down? It's like it's always been down you know, um, I spoke to her because I was trying to quietly make some food and uh, have a have a chocolate drink hot chocolate drink you know recovery drink I was trying to do all of that and then she was flashing a, you know waving a torch around and stomping around slamming the car slamming the you know it was just like and I, I spoke to her and said you know have you ever been on a campsite have you ever you know and she's oh 50 years of caravanning I was like oh caravan oh dear I didn't say that and then it was like, you know, you do know you shouldn't try and talk to us at night until the people's tents. And, and she was so drunk, she couldn't hold it. <laughs> and uh, as I spoke to the the people who run the place this morning, and apparently, sadly, up in Wales, a family of four was run over by a car in a tent. And I think a child and one of the adults died. That was very recently, and it's, that's why they have these gates at night time to stop people driving through. And they have a bit of parking outside, so you can park there and walk to your, you know, if it's later. But the idea of having drunk, possibly drunk people driving cars uh, who've left earlier in the day and didn't realise someone's now camped in front of their, you know, in, you know near their spot, they just run them over. And uh, so I totally agree with that. The site has always been very. Uh, quiet at night and you know even everyone people all ch- ch- turn the lights off and they're told to I haven't gone through I haven't actually seen the rules but they're very you know they're very sort of quiet and you know wonderful, more quiet than this <laughs> you know and, and dark and there isn't any lighting you know and it, it, it's brilliant you know especially with the, you don't really need much lighting when the moon's out that, that's a big moon is it and so that she was. She told me to piss off, and it was. Uh, she was very rude to me. The uh, this woman, but she was just so drunk, and it was just like, why are you waving torches around? You know, this time of night, because I, I was getting, you know, getting this beam of light, vast beam of light. My tent. I, was, I thought it was a siren. It was just like rotating like that. And it's just because she was so drunk, she couldn't hold the hold the torch. And uh, yeah, so today has been very sort of chilled charging my f- battery and my phone uh, doing podcasty stuff um, doing not much at all why not just make a noise um, you know not doing very much at all really and just you know <sighs> my, my legs are not too bad I mean I, the I probably did at least 21 miles if not it's kind of like a little route map thing uh, obviously Google doesn't understand paths Osmand does but it understands paths that don't exist 
because it's a it's based off older maps before the whole area became um a, a range so a mod range so a little path it's referring to just end on a gate you can't go through them but oh, google doesn't have those at all so I tried to do the waypointy thing and it was either 21 or 27 but it certainly it was 5 miles just over 5 miles from the campsite to oh, so, so much bloody traffic um, certainly 5 miles from the campsite to Tainham and it was 3 miles back or 3 and a quarter nearly 4 miles back from Kimmeridge and so yeah, it was, uh, I think I'm going to go back the way I usually know. Um, I don't know if there's a, an easier way to the village. I think not. I think you have to go that way. So, over the horrible road. Uh, everyone wants to get down to Swanage. Why? I don't know. So, yes. So... I, I it was a, it was a long walk, and I would recommend. I think I think I recorded one of the things just before I got up Hovington Hill, and then I recorded a thing when I arrived in Kimmeridge. There's a gap there, um, and because it's Rangers, there's very few gates in, and so one of the frustrating things was is I at the bottom of Hovington Hill, I could actually see um, styles and markers. And I was like, but there's a path there, but. The gate is, gate is locked. It was a barbed wire gate saying no entrance. I put, but that looks like it should be able to get in there because there are styles to it. And I knew there was a path going up from Tynham to that area. So I was like, well, that must connect to that. And so we get all the way up to viewpoint and then find a path. You know, this path that I've been looking through the barbed wire going, what's the path? And I was like, that's the path I need to be on, but I can't get to it. And then I find an entrance and walked all the way back down again, which slowed me down. And hence why I got into... Kimmeridge around 9.30 and then had that lovely walk back in the dark but luckily, even though I didn't have my head torch um, the little the little light on my battery bank, it's got a little LED light, it's really useful because it doesn't seem to drain any power at all off the bank it's very, you know, it didn't the numbers didn't go down um but that's what I used to get home and it was enough to see and and then the moon came out and that was helping but yeah it was not recommended doing that in the night walking through the roads and also some of the roads again Google says oh you can go through here to uh, was it Braddle somewhere like Braddle uh, big sign saying Saturn your Saturn have no Saturn have is wrong this is farm you certainly I don't know if that's right or not it looked like a normal road but I didn't want to test it so I had to go all the way up and then onto the evil road which is the road just off the road you're hearing and it's got that kind of traffic on during the day uh, a lot of people go very fast down that road they go that kind of speed down that road and it's, and it's unlike the road which I'm next to which is the road that goes past Corfe Castle um, which is quite a main road to Swanage uh, it's a smaller road but I've seen trucks and you know massive trucks and arctics try and go down there so it's not, you know, it was quiet last night, thankfully. But it's not a road I ever like to walk on because it's unwalkable in Dorset terms because it's a small track road, lots of people speeding down it. And um, I don't have my, fortunately, I don't have my walking stick. And of course, no pavement. So <laughs> lovely. But luckily last night, it was hardly anyone about well, because it was Sunday at sort of 10 or 11 o'clock. So anyway so that's the update about what happened last night i'll probably put a picture a sunset picture on the artwork and yeah i want to try and get some drawing done today but it's just been more about recovery uh i might go up to knoll hill and draw from then or maybe the you know somewhere around Corf. i need to go to the Corf stores before they close at six o'clock um, and see if I can get some after sun because I I have sunblock on me and the sun I was religiously spraying the sunblock every hour to two hours religiously still 
and I had a t-shirt covering over my my neck as well and it still managed to get quite prawned um so I'm looking for some after sun I think if I find some and, and a bit more of the if I find a small bottle of the sunblock because I'm starting to run out <laughs> But yeah, it was the, the oldy liqueur stuff, and it smells really odd as well. It smells a bit mouldy, but but it seems to work. So anyway, I'll speak to you soon.